no more dry code. I am the Android programmer. And if you know anything about me, it's that I don't like to fool around. So this is the no fools guide to becoming senior Android programmer. First and foremost, you need to know networking library. And by knowing, I mean knowing how to use one. There are some people who will tell you that to become senior, you have to know under the hood what is happening and to be able maybe to write one yourself. They are lying. They are wrong. Do not listen to them. All you need to know is how to work with either retrofit, OK HTTP or volley or a combination of those three. Besides that, the libraries that exist out there that deal with networking on Android, I've never heard of. They don't matter. No one has heard of them. Do not waste your time. Second of all, probably you know this, you need to know how to use an imaging library. The two most famous ones are Glide and Picasso. Of course, again, some people will say you have to know what's going on under the hood to the degree that you might be able to write. You do not. You don't. All you need to know is how to work with these two. There's a million other image loading libraries that are out there. No one's heard of them. They don't matter. Just use these two. Remember, this stuff can get you through the door as a senior Android programmer. This stuff, I've been doing Android eight years. About five of those years have been senior Android developer. I have never been asked to use anything but this. Your experience may vary, probably won't, but this is what I'm telling you. Threading. You need to know threading, either with coroutines or with RxJava. RxJava is becoming outdated, but if you are becoming a senior and, oh sorry, I meant senior Android programmer, you are expected to know how RxJava works, because not all code bases have moved to coroutines yet. So a lot of the code bases that you're going to see still have Rx in them. And you have to know how to use it. You also have to know how to turn previous Rx code into coroutines, which is not very hard. Maybe I'll make a video around it uh, sometime. But this is expected of you. You must know both. If you only know coroutines, that's fine. But if you know neither, bye bye no go, bro. Working with views to build a screen, how do you build it? How do you maintain an existing screen? You either know XML, you have to know view binding if you're gonna go the XML route, or you go Compose. Lately I've been noticing that Compose is predominant, it is expected now. What is also expected that you of course know how to do it with XML, because you are senior. So. A lot of the code, again, just like the threading part, is not going to be ported to Compose. You are, first of all, required to know the old way, because a lot of the code is going to be in the old way. Second of all, you have to know how to port from the old way to the new way. So you have to know both. For me, knowing only XML and being only an expert in XML, I would say no to the, to the person. Honestly, I don't like it. Why don't you know Compose? It's been out for years and it is very good. Why don't you know it? You must know Compose. You must know both. Remember, anybody who tells you different is lying to you. Data persistence. You have room. Very popular. Very easy to learn. Very easy to use. Very simple also. Not very powerful. You have Realm. Very powerful. Harder to learn. Any one of these, GreenDAO is also easy to learn. RM Lite, I've never tried. GraphQL as well. If you are only using uh, APIs and you want to query them, this is a great way to, to do that. And it falls, I believe, under this uh, title, Data Persistence, except you're persisting uh, remotely, not locally. GraphQL, if you know that, you're golden. Room is the least expected. SQLite, raw as well as expected. These are things that are not really, these are, you, you must know them. It's out of the question. You know, it's not like, oh, I prefer uh, just figure it out how to persist data on Android. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer to ask of you that you know it, not a no brainer to figure out how it works. It does need a brain to figure out how it works. Just a little note there. 
Dependency injection. You gotta know dependency injection. This is the stuff that makes you feel like you leveled up if you know it. You got dagger. Very difficult to understand. Only for the pros. You're a pro, aren't you? Dagger is very difficult. Good luck with that. Coin is much easier, less powerful. Overall, I don't like it. Now that I've learned how to do dagger correctly, or shall I say easily with hilt, no going back. I would not go back to coin. I don't like it because coin is not compile time. It's run time. So you only figure out what's going on when you run the thing. Dagger, i.e. hilt, will not let you compile if there's something wrong. I like that much more. I just like it more because it's safer. I feel safer. I can sleep better if I see this behavior in front of me and it doesn't explode in my face when I, you get the idea, you know? Butter knife, that's an old one. That's a good one by our friend Jake Wharton. He's a very good friend of mine. He's not. Uh, it's a very good library, but I've never heard of it in the past three years. It is just uh, in the past. Nobody does that anymore. If you hear that somebody does this, uh, they are lying to you. Remember this. Algorithms and data structures. Very important. I'm just kidding. Nobody asks that. You don't need to know any of this. You will never face it. Ever. Unless you are applying for one of those big companies, Google, Schmoogle, you know, the bunch that still insist on asking these things. I believe they are important. You should know them. It would be very embarrassing for you if you were in an interview and someone is not asking about algorithms and data structures, not per se, but they offhandedly mention, yeah, you know, that's the runtime of, uh, of a hash map and you don't know the runtime of a hash map. That's kind of embarrassing. I would, I would learn them if I were you, but I wouldn't study them before an Android interview. I have never, ever been asked to go through an algorithms and data structures interview in any of the companies that I applied for any of them, except for when it's Google or Facebook or, you know, the bunch and you know, the resources where you could find stuff about that stuff. Uh, you know, you're not going to see it in the industry. I don't believe if you do, you are lying. I don't know why I'm underlining some of the values and some of the values are not bold and I don't care. Why are you looking at that anyway? Firebase, you need to know Firebase, 100%. Everybody uses Firebase. You have Firebase that handles user authentication. You have Firebase that handles distribution of your application. Crashlytics, it handles all the crashes. You have to know how to use Firebase, the console, the UI, how to integrate it into an application. You have to know how to add your debug key to different variants of the application. You have a debug version, you have a production version, and this needs to sign in even when you're not in production. All of this stuff you have to know. Also remote config. What it's most used for that I've seen is holding features behind the feature flag. So remote config has a feature flag that says should show this new feature or not. What your application does starts up fetches the value. Should I show this new feature or not? Depending on that, you do the thing. So this is done through something called remote config. It's on Firebase. You're expected to know this or quickly learn it. It's not hard, but you know, this is what you need to do. Debugging. You must know how to debug. We're not talking about uh, fancy stuff, just a debugger. You have to be able to get a message that something is failing. Here's where the, the general vicinity of where it's failing, figure it out. What's going on? You know, you need to be able to pin down exactly what's going on. You need to be able to use the debugger very comfortably as if it's uh, second nature. You step through stuff, you place a breakpoint here, you place a break. It's not hard stuff. It's not, but this needs to be second nature to you, right? This needs to be. I already said it. Uh, what, what am I going to say? Analytics. This is the most annoying part. Not because it is hard, but because it is easy. And <laughs> no, because the company is going to ask you to do analytics. So we would like to know uh, how many times the user is pressing on this button. And so that we can stuff like that. You're going to be asked stuff like that. You need to track 
the feature, how it's working, and you need to send the properties of the user when they're in this stage of the application and when they're doing this thing. It's annoying. It's not hard. It's just annoying because synchronizing or orchestrating how the whole app is going to have to report to back back to one place in a format that you as a developer uh, can understand and reason about and at the same time fulfill what the business requirements want for example the user is trying to purchase something on the application and the user profile is available globally but the list of things that the user has bought previously is not available globally what is available globally is about the user details. And yet this tracking event, whenever he wants to buy or sell something, is requesting that you give me all the stuff that's previously been bought, plus uh, the new thing he's going to buy now, right? So you have to go grab something from over there, and then grab something, and then give to this analytics thing. It's going to be annoying, right? But it is not hard. I have not found it very difficult. The most famous one, I would say Braze and Firebase, I guess. But all of these I've heard of, all of these, Apps Flyer being the worst, I think. New Relic is complicated, I think. Firebase, Flurry, these seem to be common, easy. Firebase is very big for that. Braze is super, super powerful, but uh, you need a kind of dedicated person on your team that just does Braze, honestly. No need to expand here, push notifications, you need to know them, you need to know how to receive them, you need to know how to send them, you need to know how to work with the platform that allows for sending and receiving. They need to be second nature to you, it's no question, no back and forth, can you implement push notifications? Yes sir, see you in a while. It's like pull to refresh at this point. Also, deep linking, this is also very requested. Meaning, you have a link standing out in the wild, you press on it, it takes you to your application on the phone, and it opens up your application. The purpose of this is that it can open up your application with some predefined uh, parameters, that it opens this specific page and uh, colors it white, and then shows them that all, all of this has to happen from the deep link. So you send specific information, you act on it, uh, when you receive the deep link, how to parse the links, how to uh, distribute them based on some regular expression, based on some thing you do. Push notifications and deep links are all offered probably from the same platform because Firebase offers both. I've rarely seen someone use, oh my God, look at this apps flyer. It's not underlined. No, that this is too much. There you go. I'm sorry, but these I'm not going to style. Deal with it. They are both offered from the same platform, so there's no really uh, scratching your head over how to do it. Th it. This will be resolved for you. They're going to say, hey, we use this platform to do deep links or something. Can you just support them on the app? You go, yes, because it, we're not saying this is a startup. In a startup, you probably have to figure out this entire thing by yourself. But we're saying this is some established company mid to large size, uh, let's call it a scale up, not a startup. And they have probably decided on all of this stuff. They just need you to do to, to build the app, right? They probably also have an iOS version. Could you do like the iOS version? This is the harsh reality, my friend. If anyone tells you different, they probably had a different experience. We can't call everybody a liar, can we? They probably are. The final one, the hardest boss. This is the hardest one, refactoring. Refactoring, my friend, is the badge that you can carry on your shoulder that can signify that you are really senior. The ability to take some legacy code that is per perfectly fine, it's working amazing, but it doesn't meet the standard of your team uh, team's ambition. You have suddenly all decided that Compose is the way to go. Or you have decided that uh, let's go uh, coroutines, we don't want RxJava anymore. Oh, but the whole code base is uh, RxJava. Well, who's going to undertake this mission? That's you, my friend. You're going to do that. What's required here is two things. I'm going to go just one. What's required here is two things. First of all, the courage. You have to believe that you can do it. You have to believe it. This is not an overnight thing, definitely. You have to have done this before. 
But even if you have done this before, you will still be afraid. The faster you can remove this fear, the better. Second of all, you require planning. If you don't plan the refactor, it will stretch. It will go on for months. I have experienced this myself. I didn't have the fear. I had the fearlessness, but I didn't have the planning. There isn't really a word for this in English, but there is one in Arabic. at meaning when you rush into things with full courage, but no thinking. Now, you need two. You need to be fearless and you need to plan accordingly. Because refactoring touches everything. If you touch one component, this component is not sitting in a vacuum. It is touching some other component and touching, it's a lot of touching happening. So you want to touch it very carefully so as not to disturb all the others. You can disturb all the others if you also have the time to touch all the others as well, but you probably don't. What you need to do is plan. How do I fix what I need to do in this box without creating several other hundred boxes and then I have to explain, oh, hey, where's that thing you said you would refactor? Oh, well, now I'm rebuilding the app from screen. Now you're, now you're done. Now you have messed up. And now how do you roll back? You've been doing this for a month and no one can help you. Because if you re go refer to some senior programmer, let's say he has all the answers in the world. Yes, he does. But you don't have a question. The, the question is that everything is not working. Well, how do, how do I reproduce it? I don't know how you reproduce it. I don't know where I am anyway. So tread into this carefully, but you must do it. You must, you are expected to be able to do this. You can take small chunks of things and do them, but don't rush it. You will shoot yourself in the face. You don't want to do that. That's, the, that's it. That's, that's everything. How could we forget? See, the fact that I forgot this, it's kind of indicative as to the degree of severity the testing has. It's not that severe. As much as you'd like to think that you are a pure programmer, that you, are, you test everything, it is not that much required. In my case, for example, I've went from zero severity, no one asks, no one cares, into higher and higher and higher severities as I progressed. Why? Because... I became more severe about it. I started to insist that I would like to write tests before I publish a piece of code or a feature or whatever. And this has influenced other people on the team who also like to test or they have influenced me that, hey, you know, uh, where's the tests for this? Oh, right. Yeah, I was just about to push them, you know. It's not a deal breaker. It can be a deal breaker if you have no idea whatsoever, <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, no. You have to know how to do it, but you can say, hey, it's not every time. Hey, it's not full 100%. Hey, it's not, uh, oh, I'll write it later. Or I thought, you know, it's, it's a kind of a very thin line between doing it and forgetting to do it, but not knowing how to do it, that's a no. You have to know UI tests, you have to do compose tests or views tests in the old way. You have to know how to test your threads, how they're working, how to simulate a thread going and pausing and taking a break and waiting until the result, all this stuff. You have to know coroutines and stuff, JUnit, all that has to be. Also Mokito, how to mock stuff, because you are senior, you have to know Mokito. So you have to know Mokito, how to mock views, uh, not views, how to mock uh, dependencies and all of that. Get around dependency injection. For example, you have Hilt, you need a module for that simulates your actual module. This needs to be, you know, you need to know this. Anything other than this, of course, you're going to be asked. There are going to be new libraries every day. This is expected that you will be able to adapt, learn. But this list here, this is what you're expected to know walking through the door. If you don't have one of these, fine. But there are some of them. If you don't have them, you don't walk through the door. Bye bye for you. No threading, bye bye. No data persistence, that's a no brainer, of course, bye bye. Dependency injection, that's a must. Firebase crash lytics, you must know this. It's gonna be embarrassing for you if you don't. Now the list is complete. Senior Android programmer knows their stuff. You can command any salary under $4,000. Any salary. That's it. See you in the next one.